bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see Jim here. In this video, we are going to cover um, oh, uh, harnesses that are suitable for uh, flying in supron, which is feet forward with your feet above the base tube of a head glider. And um, I'm also going to point out a, uh, a couple reasons why these paragliding harnesses that I have been using are not ideal. Uh, one of them is a uh, safety concern. Like, look at these. You got your safety pins on the side. I actually set up my hang glider in the driveway with this set of wheels on there. And I just sat there in the driveway and just thrashed and thrashed. And look at this. I succeeded. And bump, 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 bump. With my own wheel. Now what if I'm doing that in the air? My point being is these paragliding harnesses were never designed to be bumped into objects. They work fine for paragliding. Suprone over the bar. This whole undersection needs to be clean as a whistle. We need to have this clean. We can't have people flying with wheels where they can actually dislodge their own parachute, have a premature deployment. I just need to, you know, this is a heads up. These harnesses probably work great for supine, which is below the base tube, because there's no objects down there for them to bump into. But when we fly above the bar, this needs to be a concern, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> another reason why I would want there to be a standard DHV harness for Suprone. Okay, roll authority. Uh, here I am. This is a clip from a year ago, thermaling up, I'm flying with a rolled down, a, a base tube rolled downward 60 degrees, experienced great roll authority in this position, I was able to lower the, my weight, but uh, if you remember this video, the, uh, the airbag still caught the base tube, so I modified it. But what you don't know about the modification is there was still four inches of foam under my seat robbing me of roll. So I need to, to figure out, okay, how can I figure out in these harnesses exactly how much space is between my bottom and the base tube? And here's the Gen Genie. It worked great, but again, um, as you'll find out, how much wasted space is under my bottom. That's the goal in. here. So I hooked up uh, Susan K. Moser, offered to volunteer to be my harness model. And we started with the Gin Genie. Gin Genie Race. Got a measurement between the bottom of that harness and the porch. And I built this funky little gauge because we need a reference point on the pilot's body. And I chose uh, the top of her thigh, where her thigh bone meets her hip. Her thigh was level, and I slid that up to a mark that I could duplicate. So we'll know your body position, regardless of the harness, is exactly the same height in both harnesses. So I want to find out how much wasted space is below my um, bottom when I'm flying in this Gin Genie race. We, I know I've got a parachute in there. It's the same measurement that we used off of the other So we cracked out this harness. It's an old Sunbird supine harness that Scott Campbell um, threw my way. Thanks, Scotty. That she was in the other harness. So we've got we've got Susan's body at exactly the same height. Padding. Remember we had three inches. We only had three inches before. Nine. Nine Solid. inches. That's probably even higher, nine and a half. That's a lot. It's nine. And then right goes 
That's 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 that all represents role authority in in this position. We're being robbed of six inches. It's more than I thought. Six inches difference between those two harnesses. So then what I did is I decided, well, how high are we flying off the bar when we're flying in prone? I was curious. So I dragged out my prone harness. And this was right. pretty easy to inspect. Um, well, we go a fist, right? Or over. Okay. I go like this. I go like that. So what is that? Right there, or the thickest part? Seven inches. Actually, seven and a half. Looking at it this way. Seven and a half inches, our body is off the bar when we fly prone. And we have great roll control. You see where I'm getting with this? I'll draw it out for you. It's cold. Um, so what have we learned so far? Here's what we've learned, okay? Let's put it in plain English here. All right. Suprone, prone. We have found that between the fist that we usually put ourselves off of the control bar and the thickness of the parachute, we, are, we found that we were seven and a half inches off the bar. Now in the test flying I've done in the last year and a half, I've found I only need to drop my weight four inches to achieve the same roll control in suprone as we achieve in prone. This is where we fly to achieve our excellent roll control. Excellent roll, also cross country roll. Um, okay, so what I had to do, since there's six inches as we found, six inches of wasted space below most paragliding harnesses for reserve containers, padding, some of them have airbags, so on and so forth. This is the hurdle that I need to get beyond before I go into production with the fly bar for foot launch applications. Do we need to rotate our base tube down or don't we? Okay, so I've been flying an inch off the bar. You notice right at this mark, I'm at a six, six inches. That's the wasted space. So from here down represents the wasted space and I'm flying an inch off my rolled down base tube. And in this position, I'm getting fantastic roll control. Well, what if we took away the reserve container under that and, <clears throat> and uh, the reserve container and the padding, we took away that six inches and, and let's say Let's say we build a Suprone harness that with padding and the butt plate and everything is only two inches thick. We'll still get to fly an inch off the bar and we'll be right at the same mark. See, it should work. But I don't know yet if I haven't flown it. Why? Because we don't have a Suprone harness. The math says I would not have to rotate my base tube downwards. I would not have to modify my hang glider that's rigged for the prone position. I would not have to modify any part of the certified configuration of the glider. This was made by Sunbirds and it was for supine. So I basically took the super long supine strap, doubled it up, took uh, about 13 inches out of the middle of it, bar tacked it, and it's a terrible stitch. I'm glad, aren't you glad I'm not sewing your harnesses for you? Okay. Looks like you sewed the shit out of it. Oh, well, That's I did. By the way, on this next flight that I'm going to do with this harness, actually, now that I did with this harness, uh, this has been modified since then, <clears throat> I was flying with my bottom about uh, one inch off of a regular base tip. And here we go. <clears throat> Regular base tube, sunbird, supine harness, sewed up for a suprone position. How's the roll? Well, it was fantastic. It's honestly the best roll control I've ever experienced on a hang glider in uh, 45 years. It is. Better than prone. I'm, I'm getting instantaneous 
roll. I'm extremely light pressures. <clears throat> and this was not a smooth air day. It was smooth air punctuated by what I call bullets. Um, Corey calls them something else. You'll hear from him shortly. <laughs> but uh, roll was fantastic. This is, this is what a real pilot looks like. Hey, Corey. Hey, hey. <laughs> so how'd I look out there? You look good. Well, do you see? You look the, comfortable. Do you see the low response I had? Yeah. My God. There are spear truckers out there. I, I, you know, there was. Yeah. There were. Uh, uh, I had. I had total roll authority out there. You did. Better than on any glider I've flown in my entire life. Wow. And I, and I was over the bar. So I had to try it again. <clears throat> this time I uh, I did not like where that straight base tube came on my knees so I strapped on a regular base tube look down there on the ground you'll see a regular regular belly bar speed bar it is not rotated downwards it's just just stock but uh, and I'm I set I set myself to fly two and a half inches off that base tube unfortunately uh, there's a mishap here on launch, and um, the mishap drops me back down to one inch off the base tube, so see if you can spot the mishap. <sighs> see it? My head is stuck in front of my risers. My spreader bar has twisted out of position won't even let me rock my head back. Yeah, there it is. Now I see it. I'm going, oh shit. So I look at it for a while. And they, well, you know, they could stand up in my control frame and take the weight off the risers and put it back in position. And then I saw it. Nah, let's just fly. And I had a great flight. <clears throat> Again, I was hoping to be flying uh, two and a half inches off the base tube. But after the mishap uh, with that spreader bar, I'm flying about one inch off the base tube again. Same as last flight. Had a great time. And now I'm heading out for landing. And uh, it's the first time I've flown without wheels in over a year and I've got a situation on my hands. I chose to show this landing because I did everything wrong on this landing. I'm not gonna blame it all on the, on the mishap. I pull my arms back, I throw my legs forward, but I must admit, it is awkward, very awkward for that. Yeah. <laughs> we need the uh, a new harness. I picked you. I picked the worst flight to fly without wheels. That was a mess. Dang it. Whew, that was just awkward all around. But, even though I couldn't get my head through back and forth to do a nice smooth flare, I was not being hit on my shoulders when I tried to flare. Since that flight, <laughs> I took out that spreader bar, I bent a new tube, I sewed in some tabs, it's, now I can get forward and back, and these two leg loops were really the only thing 
holding me into this harness. So I went back to the sewing machine and I had I, I sewed in a, a belt. <laughs> okay. So I feel pretty good about this one right now. But again, the major a major advantage of this harness is when you rock up, when you rock up and you're like this, this cantilever design actually holds the hang strap or the, the main suspension away from your arm so you can get a full flare in. Um, we could design that into something like this. It doesn't have to be this big. It could be a like a carbon fiber uh, butt plate with a <clears throat> with a built-in hinge point that holds this strap out in front of you. So when you rock up, so we're not going to have to do that funky thing where we rotate our arms through the risers. Here's an example of rotating my arms through the risers. I found I, if, if I don't rotate through the risers, those, those risers halfway through my flare will push back on my arms and um, <clears throat> that landing does not turn out too well. Um, so I would like to see a Supron specific harness that incorporates a hinge plate so we do not have to do this particular rotation that you just saw me do. Uh, that would be nice. Now with every PG harness I've flown I have to rotate through. If I'm flying a PG harness on a hang glider set up for the prone position with the forward swept A-frame. Um, so far, yes. So far, everyone. And just to show you that I can, I do know how to land a hang glider and keep my... There we go. That's better. Phew. Piece of cake. Yeah. All right. Back to the porch. Um, that would solve so many problems. And then, of course, a harness like this, it's totally clean. <clears throat> Under the bottom, we'll have outrageous roll authority without having to modify our hang gliders from the uh, uh, standard prone configuration. We won't have to modify it. We won't have to rotate the base tubes downward. It'll look like that. It'll have the hinge point built in. So I might, but there's another really important aspect that I have not covered in this video. <clears throat> I might make a part two for this harness video about um, why it's very important to have a harness that's totally clean where you can um, move yourself forward beyond the base tube, beyond the down tubes, and get into the right and left corners. Um, with all these, with all these other harnesses, there's no way I can do that. Even if I do rotate the base tube downwards, and I really need to cover that. So that'll be like a, a part two because this video is already really long, right? So, but I just wanted to share with you everything I've learned so far. And really, it's uh, you know, the the fly bar idea. <clears throat> it's working great. We just need a harness to go with it. And uh, I really don't want everyone out there to have to go through everything that I've gone through to try to figure all this out. Um, <clears throat> at this point, um, harness comes first. So this is a GoFundMe to scrape together enough money to uh, book an entire week with high energy sports. I'll be going down there working with Mike Berg, Jacob. Um, <clears throat> we will, uh, he's pretty confident we can kick one out in one week and then the R&D will be done. And then I'll stay for another week and fly it in the Southern California area. <clears throat> There's certainly no flying to be had down up here. I'll take the camera down with me and record the entire process of the R&D and the uh, brainstorming of uh, what will work, what won't work, and um, so I'll take you with me. But I can't do this without your help, because I'm broke. <laughs> I, need, I, I, I need some support on this one. All right.
Um, so this is strictly to get, this is strictly to make a Supreme specific harness a reality. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Cut me off or send me money because um, it's really not going to go forward anymore without <clears throat> the harness. We need the harness. So, long story short, if we had a Saprone specific harness where you could call it high energy sports, say, yeah, I'd like a Saprone harness, you know, that one that doesn't have anything down here, gets the pilot center mass down really low to the base tube, has a parachute up on the chest. Yeah, that one. I'll take one of those. Thanks. And then it's made to DHV standard lengths. You just unclip your uh, prone harness and clip in your suit prone harness, strap on a fly bar, and you're good to go. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for watching. And uh, some of you are wondering, where did I get all these paragliding harnesses to try out? Uh, I have a neighbor lives two miles down the road. Her name's Diana Allman. She works with the Cloud Based Foundation. It's an excellent organization. And they've been supporting me in this by feeding me. As the donations come in in the local area, they've allowed them to um, be piped onto my front porch. And now all these harnesses will go back to the Cloud Based Foundation. And they, they use these donations to for charity and teaching that people in other countries how to fly and build schools and they do all sorts of great work. So check out the Cloud Dice Foundation and and, uh, and I just want to say I really appreciate their support because uh, without this steady stream of paragliding style harnesses, I wouldn't have been able to figure all this out. Thank you. All right. Unfortunately, none of them are suitable <laughs> now that I've gone through them all. Yeah, we really do need our own harness. Um, I'll cover, uh, look for the next um, harness considerations video. There'll be a part two because really I haven't even begun to cover all the reasons why we really need our own harness uh, to, uh, to the Supron position in England. All right, thanks. So that's what that's what this bar is designed to do. It's designed to uh, put the pivot point out in front of your shoulders, so we can flare like normal. Now, properly designed harness of the uh, kind of a mixture of this one this one concept on this harness, uh, plus everything else will be more like the Gen Genie. Good. or actually any pod style paragliding harness it just it of all the harnesses i've tried this has worked the best it launches effortlessly it's easy to get into the boot it makes you feel so secure in it now we take away six inches under the ass probably take away the point sticking out the back why because every time i try to get up off the ground the rear point of that harness catches on my rear wires. That's why. Then we'll have a harness that can get in, out, into the front right corner. No problem. You're there. That's what I want. Like so. But with a little more support. Yeah. Look how easily I can hold speed on my downwind using only my legs. I mean, yeah. You know, another thing about the PG harnesses, I'll show you up on the porch. Okay. Um, all the D-rings are in different positions, so there's no way, like, if you called me up and say, hey Jim, how long do those risers need to be for such and such a harness? Yeah, I'd have no idea. They're all different. I'll show you that. Later. <coughs> Yeah, how many harnesses do you want to wade through to find this out, right? I've had a few to work with. Um, there's something on every single one of them. Like this one has an airbag underneath. Has the parachute reserve on the, on the back of it. 
there's something this one has an airbag underneath that's going to rob you of 12 inches of space no roll control there this one has an airbag underneath that's not even worth trying now this one this one uh only has check this out it only has storage space underneath underneath the bottom there's only this storage space it's still going to rob you of six inches i tried it out once it's all full of my gear and that's the only place to put the gear it has a reserve on the back it's another thing to look at or look at this reserve container you are not going to get a hang gliding reserve in that little tiny container with your uh you know 20 some feet of uh, bridle and and your uh, swivel it won't fit. I've tried.